Okay. So one of the important skills that we're going to have for uh, chapter 15 is learning how to draw chemical structures. And as I've discussed uh, before, in chapter 12, or I'm chapter, sorry, in chapter 10 in Gen Chem 1, we learned about drawing uh, chemical structures as Lewis structures. So being able to take a molecular formula and piece together uh, parts to make a structural formula. But again, structural formulas are uh, very labor intensive to draw. They do provide lots of information since they draw out every single bond and every single atom. So as we get to organic molecules, which tend to get bigger and bigger, we'd like to have a, uh, an easier way and a more concise way to draw structures. And so sometimes just condensing the structure as shown here is a simpler way. So again, recognizing that we know that this carbon atom is bonded to these three hydrogens in this way, but we can simplify it in terms of how we write it. And again, this is really helpful when you're just using um, you know, a computer word processing program because you can write out this structure just by simply typing it. The rest of these structures require a chemical drawing program. That being said, though, to draw molecules and draw lots of molecules quickly, we'd like to be able to have a more simplified approach. And so we use what this um, worksheet calls a line angle structure, what we've referred to as a skeletal structure in the notes. And again, it's just a simplified way of being able to represent the same structural information in a much more simplified way. So there was a handout that was provided in class that kind of talks about how to interconvert between Lewis structures, condensed structures, and line structures. And kind of as an analogy, I talked about Lewis structures being like printing, where it takes a lot of time, but you write out every single atom and every single bond. And so it's very neat and provides all the information. Condensed structures is like drawing in cur or writing in cursive, right? It's a compromise between information and time where you can write things more quickly, but they still provide all of the information. What we'd like to get to is truly a chemical shorthand way of drawing structures, where we draw them as what we call skeletal or line structures. So again, looking at the differences between these three um, ways that we can draw structures, lots of information, but lots of time. All the information is still there, but we need to understand how to read the shorthand. So that's what we're going to do as we work through this worksheet. So again, the first page of this worksheet really just deals with um, converting condensed structures into uh, skeletal structures. Um, the second part of this uh, asks us to look at skeletal structures and then make condensed structures. And we're less likely to actually have problems where we physically do this, but it will be important that when we look at this structure in our mind, we truly see all of the atoms that are there. And again, for these uh, line or skeletal structures, um, we do not draw out carbon or hydrogen atoms unless they are part of a functional group and all heteroatoms are drawn out. So let's just work through these problems and see um, you know, if we can come up with a systematic way to, um, to draw these uh, skeletal structures. So remember, anytime you see something as a condensed structure, if something is really what I've referred to as kind of a dangle or something that's attached onto a main chain, you'll see it in parentheses. So maybe for this first problem, it might be helpful if we draw this out more like um, a structural formula or kind of a modified version between condensed and structural so we can see who's bonded to who. So we have a CH3 group here first that's bonded to a CH and in parentheses this OH tells us that it's bonded to again the group that's listed just previously or the carbon that's listed just previous. Then we have another CH group and then we have a CH3 here and then a C2H5 means that there's two carbons attached to one another. And if we think about what that must mean, it must mean that there's a CH2 group and a CH3 group. Remember the rule of four. Carbon likes to bond to four things. So if we have two carbon atoms connected together, this carbon is connected to this one and this one, so it can only have two hydrogens. This carbon being on the end and connected to only one other carbon can have three carbons. All right, so now that we can truly see that we've got five carbons in what we call our main chain here and two dangles or an OH group and a CH3 group, we can more easily draw our condensed or our, I'm sorry, our skeletal structure. All right, so the first thing that we want to do in drawing um, and converting between a condensed structure and a skeletal structure, and uh, I'm going to show you kind of a shorthand way to do this, and we're going to move as we get through this um, worksheet here to try to avoid doing this. So start out by putting a dot on every carbon that you have in your main chain there. We can see that we have five dots there, which means we're going to have five carbons in our main chain. 
when we draw our chains in a uh, skeletal structure, we draw them as zigzag lines, recognizing that every start of a line or intersection of two lines represents a carbon atom. So when you draw these, I want you to start by putting your pencil down, and initially here we're going to draw a little dot to remind ourselves that that's a carbon atom there. And say one when you start here. So we say one, two, three, four, five. So this is how we draw a chain of five carbon atoms. As we work through this worksheet towards the end, we'll kind of eliminate this um, uh, practice of putting these um, dots here and just kind of draw the lines directly. On the second carbon atom here, we have an OH group. So we're going to draw that up like that. On the third, we have a CH3 group. Now one of the things just to kind of take note is we always want to give our atoms as much space as possible. So you wouldn't want to draw an OH down like that because that kind of crowds these. So always try to give your stuff as much space as possible. If you have two things that you need to add, put them either both up or both down. We'll see some examples where we we'll work through that. So that's the answer to the first problem here. Let's go through our second one here, and again, see, they don't put parentheses in here, but let's see if we can draw out our main chain here. So we've got CH3, CH, and then a CL attached to that. We've got another CH, and then another CL, and then we've got a carbon bonded to an oxygen, and oxygen's never going to be part really of, um, uh, of um, I shouldn't say never, in this case it's not going to be part of our main chain here, but we're going to see here that this carbon is attached to that carbon and is attached to this CH2 group, and then a C, this is going to be triple bonded to an N. And part of as you work through these problems is recognizing that if you see a C bonded to an N, that's going to be what we call a nitrile or a cyanofunctional group. Now since we can see here that this carbon atom, right, that's right there, does not have another hydrogen attached to it, that tells us that it has to be double bonded to that oxygen. If there was another hydrogen here, this oxygen would what would be called a bridging oxygen, and it would actually be between these two carbon atoms. We'll see some examples of that as we move through here. But for right now, this is what this condensed structure kind of looks like. So we've expanded it a little bit so it's easier for us to look at. So we've got a CH3, carbon bonded to chlorine, carbon bonded to chlorine. We've got a carbon yield group here, carbon doubly bonded to oxygen, another CH2, and then a C triple bonded to N. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. And for this last carbon atom, it's going to be triply bonded to a nitrogen. So, and remember, if we remember our molecular geometry, triple bonds are always going to be linear. So that's why I've kind of drawn that like this. This carbon and this nitrogen, this is all 180 degree bond angles. It's linear. One, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. On the second carbon atom, we've got a chlorine. On the third carbon atom, we've got a chlorine. And then on this carbon atom, double bonded to an oxygen. So again, we're just going to keep moving through these. For some of these, we might be able to start um, just looking at this directly. One, two, three carbon atoms. So we're going to have one, two, three carbon atoms on the third carbon atom. Anytime I see a CO2, I'm going to recognize that as one carbon that's doubly bonded and another carbon that's singly bonded. As you move on later, you'll recognize that this is an ester functional group. So we've got one, two, three carbons, doubly bonded to oxygen, singly bonded to oxygen. Then we're going to have another carbon here. Remember this group was really that one. So we're going to have this carbon atom here, and then it's going to be attached to that guy and that guy. So we've got a carbon bonded to a hydrogen, and then CH2CH3. And then we've got two of these, CH2, CH3. So this one was a little bit more involved. If you need to, go back and kind of draw this out so that you can see all the pieces that we have here. But one of the things that's important to do is look at any of these carbon atoms and say, how many hydrogens is there? Well, 
I can see that this carbon is attached to an oxygen, to one carbon, to another carbon. Remember, carbon likes to bond four times. So that means there's room for one other bonding to one hydrogen atom. So one of the things that we'll work on the second part of this worksheet is kind of working the other direction and saying, how could we get back to this condensed structure? Okay, so I'm going to work through a little bit more quickly through the rest of these. We've got a CH3 group, and then we've got two CH2 groups. So I'm going to have a CH3, one, two CH2 groups. I'm going to have a carbon that's going to be attached to one carbon up here, and then a C double bonded to O, OH. One, two, three, so we've got two of those, one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms I should have here. One, two, three, four, five, and then one dangling up. Again, if you need to, make sure you can go back and draw these out a little bit more like this expanded structure that we have here. Okay, let's take our next one here. We've got a carbon attached to a nitrogen. This nitrogen is bonded to two carbons like that. Remember, we just draw a line. We have to recognize that there's a carbon atom there bonded to as many hydrogens as we need to get to four bonds total. So that's a CH3 group. That's a CH3 group attached to this N. Now this N is attached to a CH2 group and attached to a C that's double bonded to another C. And again, this carbon bonded once here, twice here. So we've got one other space for one hydrogen atom to get us to four. This guy, doubly bonded to two carbon atoms, we've got two spaces left to get to four, two hydrogen atoms. All right, taking this guy again, we've got a carbon atom here. Let's take this carbon atom is bonded to one CH3 and another CH3. So here we've got this. This carbon atom is bonded to two CH3 groups. And now we've got another CH, and this is going to be attached to a BR. And then we've got a CH2 group and a CH3 group. Double check our atoms. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms, and then a bromine. Okay, taking this next guy, we've got to have a carbon atom that has three CH3 groups on it. So there's that little carbon atom. It's got one CH3 group, two CH3 groups, three CH3 groups. So here's these three CH3 groups, then a carbon atom that has no hydrogens on it. So it's going to be bonded to a CH2 group and then a CH group that has another CH3 coming up, and then a CH2, CH3 group. Remember when we see this, it's going to really be a CH2, CH3 group. So three CH3 groups bonded to a carbon. And right, this carbon has one, two, three, four carbons that it's bonded to. No room for any additional hydrogen, so that's why we don't see any hydrogens next to it. So that's that carbon atom. Then we've got CH2. C, there's one hydrogen there because we've got this CH3 group that's dangling up and then a CH2, CH3. Last one that we have here. Again, I'm going to start with this carbon atom and that one is going to be doubly bonded to another carbon atom here. And off of this guy, we've got CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3. After this guy, we're going to have one hydrogen and then we're going to have a carbon that's going to be doubly bonded to an oxygen and then a hydrogen. And the more of these that you do and you'll see, you'll recognize that certain groups like this when they say CHO, that's going to be this bonding group. Okay? When you see COOH, that's going to be this bonding group. We'll call this a carboxylic acid. This is an aldehyde. Okay? Um, but the more of these you do, the more of these you'll recognize. A C2H5 group is going to be a CH2CH3 group. I'm actually going to post this as two separate videos. The first one here working um, from taking a condensed structure to a skeletal, and I'm going to start another video then to go in the opposite direction.